So when we choose freedom, the transformation can be challenging. It's easier now because more and more people are going through it and we're beginning to understand the process. I felt like this so many times. I went to the top of a hill in the south of England, the west of England, one day because I didn't want to upset anybody. I went to the top of this hill in the middle of nowhere and I screamed my frustration out. I know what this image means and so many other people do. But it was the old life breaking down so the new one can take over. It's time to know thyself. Not thyself that we've been told we are, but thyself which we really are. This self, everything from the beginning, my birth, my ancestors, my children, my wife, everything comes together simultaneously. I saw everything about me, about everyone who was around me. I saw everything they were thinking now, what they thought then, what was happening before, what was happening now. There is no time, there is no sequence of events, no such thing as limitation of distance, of period of time, of place. I could be anywhere I wanted to simultaneously. That's who we are. And that's what the control system has tried to keep from us. We're all possibility. What are we doing? Thinking that we just do the same thing over and over again. That's one possibility. Let's express our uniqueness and respect each other's right to express our uniqueness. We're all possibility. Actually, one possibility is swimming against the tide. Let's try it. And let's respect each other's right to do that. We should be celebrating diversity. Diversity is an expression of all possibility. It's acquiescence and conformity that is an insult to all possibility. And yet that's what this system wants us to do, conform. And you know, at least sheep need a sheepdog to keep them in line. Humans have out sheep the sheep because we keep each other in line. We don't need the sheepdog. We have sheepdogs called parents and teachers and politicians and peer pressure. When we're thinking of expressing our uniqueness, we're not thinking, oh, what will George Bush think or what will Barack Obama think? No, no. We're thinking, what will my mother think? What will my father think? What will the neighbors think? What will my mates think? What will the people at work think? In other words, what would other people who have chosen to live in this sheep pen think of me getting out of it? It's like sitting in a cell and you find a way out through the door and instead of another pr prison warder coming along to stop you getting out, the other prisoners jump on you. That's what we do. If we are going to be what we really can be and we're going to respect our right to be different, we have to respect other ri others' right to be different as well. Because when we respect other people's right to be different and express their uniqueness, then we're setting them free and we're helping to set society free. We are policing each other all the time through ridicule, through, through condemnation. We need to start being at peace with other people having different views and expressing different lifestyles uh, than, than we do, even if we don't li uh, like it. This breaks up this sheep policing the sheep. There's only a few who in full knowledge are behind this control system and they have to get the target population to police the target population. They don't have the numbers to do it themselves. I have a simple philosophy on life, so simple. Do what you like so long as you don't impose it on others. Dead simple. That's it. Well, I've heard people say to me, that would be anarchy. What about people murdering each other? Well, I think that murder could just about constitute imposing your will on another person. And when you think about that simple philosophy, it overrides all law, need for law, if we live that. We don't need uh, laws that say don't murder when you wouldn't impose yourself on another person. And we can do this. You know, if Henry Kissinger wants to sacrifice George Bush, be my guest as long as you both agreed. Because when you leave the body, you'll feel right prats and you might learn something in your eternity. 
I get interested when they want to impose things on other people that don't want those things imposed upon them. That's what the control system is trying to do. That's why I'm interested. But express, express ourselves as long as we're all agreed. And we don't impose it on other people. We have this either or. Someone wants kind of a rave or something, and some people don't want to, to be um, affected by all the noise and disruption. And so we say, they can have it, they can't have it. It's either or. Any society that was conscious would say, okay, oh, let's, we can sort this out, okay? They don't want the noise, fair enough, understand that. They want to have a, a, a party, a rave, a good time. Okay, let, now, let's find a place where they can have what they want that don't disrupt anyone else's life. So they can have their experience that they want and no one else is affected. Everyone's a bloody winner. This is either or. Someone must win, so someone must lose. Could win. Old epoch consciousness. Winner, winner. Win, win. That's the new consciousness. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. You see, the world looks very different from up here. You don't believe me? Come and see for yourselves. And, and, and there's something about this that ain't right. When we look at this structure, we look there for the power. But why is that there? Because these silly sods are holding it up there. This is the power. They have to persuade them that they have the power so they don't, they don't take the power to bring that crashing down. Fear of bringing it down through fear of not complying. Once we step out of the pyramid and refuse to cooperate with it, no violence necessary by the way, then the pyramid starts to collapse because we're holding it together. It's a house of cards. It's all it is. Oh, it's the control system. It's a house of cards. Simple thing. People are being fined ridiculous amounts of money for putting their weedy bins out on the wrong day or too many inches from the bloody curb. And people go, I don't know what's the world coming to. It's the big brother state, in it. And then what are you going to do? Uh, what time's that game show on, honey? Terrible, a bloody thing, I don't know. What? What's that going to do? Don't tell me. That's big brother. It's little, little, little me that's causing that, not big brother. What if thousands of people, when someone is fined that money for that ridiculous thing, and like I say, they're just giving us more and more ridiculous things to see how much we'll take before we resist, and when we don't, they give us even more ridiculous things. What would happen if when someone is faced with that fine, thousands and thousands of people in that area put their wheelie bins out in the wrong place on the wrong day week after week after week after week the system couldn't cope we have the numbers and I see this your vote is your voice be heard bollocks it is how can the vote be your voice when the people you're given the choice of voting for that have any chance of forming a government are standing on the same postage stamp of political uh, policy and perception. There's no choice. We've reached a point now where the vote becomes a voice when we refuse to vote. We refuse to play the game anymore. What would have happened at this recent election, this farce, if tens of millions of people had said, we've had a bellyful, we're not voting, it only encourages them. We are not voting because we're going to make a statement that we know this system is rigged and we're having it no more. What would have happened in these, in these days that have passed since that election? The whole focus of the media and everything would have been, bloody hell, what's going on? Why this mass refusal not to vote? Now we've got a debate going. Now we're looking at why people haven't voted because the system is rigged. Now the system has to bloody start to change. 
because it's lost um, its credibility. But instead, the majority trotted along to vote because they said, well, if you don't vote for them, they might get in. It doesn't matter! Their masks on the same face. So what if they get in? Same thing will bloody happen. Comply! No! No, no! Not if it's enslaving me and my children and imposing on my freedom. Comply! Leave your home now it's foreclosed. No! 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 Let's follow this through, shall we? Millions of people in the world are losing their homes, being foreclosed, and ending up homeless. Let's follow this through. Why have you lost your home, my friend? Because I can't pay me mortgage. Why can't you pay your mortgage? Because I lost me job. Why did you lose your job? Because the great banking collapsed. They can't get this. They can't get my company went bust. And who's taking your home away and saying you've got to leave? The banks that caused the freaking problem. And we are leaving. What are we doing? What are we doing? No, we won't leave when the banks have caused the problem and now they're taking a, telling us to leave to take the assets. No, we won't. And people who are not being foreclosed need to support those that are. We're all in this together. <laughs> Compulsory vaccinations. No, no, no. You must do what we say. We have changed the law. Not if you are imposing on my freedom and my rights to be a free citizen with a free voice. No, no, no. What are they going to do? They come out of Downing Street, whether it's Clegg and his mate, bloody Cameron, or it's, it's bloody uh, Obama, whoever it is in America, and they say, we've had a discussion, and this is what we're going to do. What if vast numbers of people say, well, we ain't doing it? They have got no power whatsoever. Their power comes in our acquiescence. Oh, but you can't, you can't defy the law. Okay, let's follow this through, shall we? By the way, while I'm talking, put your arms out and I'll put the handcuffs on, because that's what you're telling me. What you're telling me is this. We have no say in laws that are passed. And then we have to obey those laws. Well, okay, forget freedom then. Okay, what if they passed a law that says, we take your children away? Would you obey it? Well, well, no, no. So there is a line then. There is a line. It's just, a, where is that line? And if a law does not respect human freedom, it does not respect human justice, it doesn't respect fair play, we should not be acquiescing to those laws, we should be refusing to acquiesce. What we need is not compliance, we need a non-comply dance. Where we beat to a different drum and we dance to a different drum. Where we refuse to acquiesce to this control system that seeks to enslave us even more than it already has. Non-comply dance. Do this comply. No. No. But we need to do it en masse. Oh, we do it with a smile on our face. We're consciousness. All that has been ever will be. Why shouldn't we have a smile on our face? And smile and feel for these people who are enclosed in mind trying to enslave us. But we need to do it en masse. Because if we don't do it in numbers, then people get picked off. That's what's happening. I am all that is, has been, ever will be. You cannot grant me my freedom. It is not your gift to grant me my freedom or take it away. Because I am, we all are, freedom. To fly. It's time to fly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get on with it.
Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming.